there is a guy. He's powerful, extremely controlling, tons of fear. She didn't know what hit her. This is definitely causing movement. Look at the windows bouncing. I don't want to stay. Oh, get me out of here. I got to go. Claude and Yvette moved into their home two years ago, along with their son, Brandon, and daughter, Ashley. When we moved in, it was a mess, so we did a lot of repairs and cosmetic to bring it to our standard of living. Just six months after moving into the home, tragedy struck. Ashley was found dead in a nearby motel room. Growing up, Ashley was a vibrant and energetic girl. But several years ago, she had to undergo life-saving surgery. After her return home from the hospital, Ashley found herself struggling with an addiction to the pain medication prescribed to her. She used to be very outgoing and bubbly and just changed her whole personality and everything. And she knew, Ashley knew she had a problem. She just said, please bring me to rehab. So we did it immediately. After successfully completing a drug rehabilitation program, Ashley returned home. One month later, in the early hours of the morning, Someone picked Ashley up from her home, and she was never seen alive again. They were still in the driveway when I pulled up. I knew something was wrong. As far as the police were concerned, and uh, they've been adamant all along, is that uh, it was an accidental death. And us as a family, as no one Ashley, we don't believe it. There's too many questions that haven't been answered. And as far as we're concerned, the case isn't closed. In the time since the tragedy, Claude and Yvette have experienced strange occurrences in their house. But has their grief turned common incidences into something more? Or is there indeed paranormal activity happening in the home? Combining traditional and non-traditional investigative techniques, our team is made up of intuitive healer Nadine, certified home inspector Brian, and paranormal investigator and researcher Michelle. The team will try and uncover what is behind the unsettling experiences of this small town home. To begin the investigation, Michelle meets with Claude and Yvette to hear firsthand what the family has been experiencing. What kind of activity was going on in the home? When I came in from work, Yvette always leaves the TV on in the dining room because we had a big dog. And when I came into the door, I uh, dropped my lunch pail and I went to the washroom. When I came back out, the TV in the living room was on and the TV in the dining room was shut off. And there was nobody there. What else has been happening in the home? Fireplace going on and off on its own. Water running, taps going on on their own. We've heard sounds, we've heard, uh, you know... Like voices, yeah, anything we, we've heard like that? Voices, uh... yeah. Can you describe that for me? One morning, we woke up and uh, both of us heard two voices. It seemed like women's voices, but it, it was so quick. I thought she had said something to me, and then she thought I was talking to her, but it was nobody yeah. else in the house. What about ever seeing anything move in the house? Mm -hmm. One night, I was laying in bed, and uh, all of a sudden, a picture of my head went flying across the room, not the lamp over on her side of the bed, which was across from where I slept. It flew quite a ways. There's no way that it could flew that far by itself. This was quite interesting. It wasn't long ago, actually. I had a bad rheumatoid flare-up. So I went to bed. At around 2, I woke up and I noticed something right in the doorway on the floor. So I took my cane and I just kind of knocked it because I wasn't sure. I flicked the light on and here it was, a stuffed animal that I used to interact with the kids with a lot. The thing is, that stuffed animal was on the bar downstairs in the rec room. What are you hoping that we can provide for you by doing our paranormal home inspection? And myself, I, I've always been a skeptic to this stuff, but there's things I can't explain. So that's a big reason why we've called, we've asked you guys to help us out, because we want answers. We're going to do our best to find you guys some answers. With the client's claims of bizarre activity in their home, Michelle and her assistant, Matt, head to the town archives to conduct their research on the property and surrounding area. While they focus on the history of the property, Certified Home Inspector Brian Daly begins his inspection. 
One day, according to my notes, the homeowner came home, the TV was on, he passed by it, there's another TV in the room just adjacent, and they kind of did a flip-flop or something. So this TV is working flip-flop with the other TV just across in the other room. The remote that's being used for these TVs is a universal remote. It operates on the same frequency, and that could have easily turned one off and one on at the same time. He just didn't realize it. We're gonna have a look at the fireplace in the living room here. Apparently, it's been coming on and off by itself. So the problem seems to have occurred down here with the electronics. And then look at this. We can see right here, the wires are loose. We've got a loose screw on the connection. This is an easy fix. It's just a turn of the screw just to tighten up that connection. and. The fireplace should operate properly. So we're in the master bedroom. The homeowners suggest that when they're in this room, they hear voices. Outside, we notice that the building envelope is not tight. Another thing is the neighbors. They're only 10 feet the other side of this wall. There's no doubt in my mind that what the homeowners are hearing in here is outside influence noises. Something's happened with this painting where it apparently flew off the wall and it hit and knocked off the wall sconce, knocked over the lamp, and ended up down in that corner. We've got so much vibration from these train tracks, there's no way that this actually flew off the wall. It fell off the wall. Absolutely something that could Look, it just happened there. <laughs> it's uncomfortable for me. I want to go because I can't take this. I don't want to stay. Oh, get me out of here. <laughs>Claude and Yvette have contacted the Paranormal Home Inspectors team to conduct a full investigation of the property. After meeting with Claude and Yvette, Michelle and her assistant Matt spend time at the town archives and have discovered some startling information. Michelle, hmm? you're not going to believe this. Six months prior to Ashley's death, they found the remains of another young girl nearby the house. Really? Yeah. In a wooded area very close to the property, a 15-year-old girl by the name of Dolly was found brutally raped and murdered. Could Michelle and Matt's findings relate to what has been going on in the home? As they carry on with their research, Home Inspector Brian Daly continues with his inspection. Apparently, these taps were turned off. Somebody came into the bathroom afterwards, and it was on full. I'm not quite sure how that could have happened, but. Let's have a closer look and see whether we have any faulty tap. And I can see just by the way it operates, it's not operating properly. When we turn from hot to cold, it's pretty obvious that we're dealing with a defective tap. Now, in this bedroom, the homeowner was sleeping here one night, and the stuffed animal that's over on that night table now wasn't here. It usually resides in the basement and ended up in the doorway here on the floor. We have cats and dogs in the house. Animals tend to do things that are unexpected. The dog or the cat picked up the stuffed toy, dropped it here in the doorway, walked away, she woke up, stuffed animal is here, problem solved. I'm satisfied that we've been able to resolve every issue in this house. Brian is convinced there is nothing unusual going on in the client's house, but with the family feeling there is something else going on, intuitive healer Nadine Mercy will conduct her investigation. Nadine has been given no information about the house or its occupants or what they have been experiencing. I'm already getting up. <gasps> Hold your breath. Ground yourself is what I'm hearing. Go. Are you talking to me? Who's talking to me here? My heart's really, really pounding right now. I'm getting an image of a cat, a black cat, bad luck. Sickness, and I'm also hearing death. What's up with this place? This bedroom is so protected, it's unbelievable. I'm being directed to look at this picture. Did she pass away? The primary spirit here is a young girl. It's the daughter. She's reaching out to her parents often. She's clapping. 
Like, she's here right now. She's clapping. But there's a missing link to a troubled situation here, and she's speaking out. Is this a murder? Not quite clear. Not in this room. This is deep to unravel this confusion. OK, that girl is here. Ooh, she just came right through me. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Woohoo! she's excited. She's got a lot of spunk, this girl. Something's in the basement. As Nadine heads downstairs, she begins to feel the presence of a second spirit, another female. It's starting to really shake down here. The daughter speaks to me, but not the other one. They are communicating. They are talking to each other. Nadine begins to sense what happened to this other young girl. She cannot turn off the images. I'm seeing her, and now I got tingles. She's on the dance floor with somebody, big guy, manipulative, controlling, extremely controlling, tons of fear. Very, very dangerous person. She had no clue. She didn't know what hit her. They're showing me everything in a kid. She had no clue. She was blindsided. Uh, it was a blow to the head, the throat. He likes throats. She was weak. He took advantage of that. She's <sighs> getting sad. I can feel the emotion. Why did you bring me here? She says, you know why? I can see her again. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> it's uncomfortable for me. I want to go because I can't take this. <laughs> Oh my God, so much pain. <laughs> She's telling me you can do it, you can do it. Stay, I don't want to stay. Oh, get me out of here. I gotta go. Nadine's experience in the home has left her visibly shaken. The terrible visions of the gruesome murder have given way to a more positive message from the spirit world. Could Nadine's experiences relate to Michelle and Matt's findings regarding the slain girl called Dolly? With night falling on the final day of our investigation, Michelle and her assistant, Matt, prepare to spend the night. Ashley, can you bang on the wall? Can you bang back just so we know that you're here? Ashley, can you tell us what happened the night that you died? Did you hear that? I thought I heard tapping in the kitchen, though. It sounds like, it almost sounds like, like footsteps, or like, you know, as if someone's walking around. Yeah, we need to go outside. Okay. We definitely need to go outside. Did you hear that? That sounded like a rock or something on the roof. Where did that come from? I have no idea. OK, let's go back in the house. Yeah, I heard that. Oh. What the heck? The TV just came on. Whoa! Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Ashley, can you do it again? The TV's off again. Oh! Back here. Dolly? Dolly, is that you? Do you have something to say to us? Ashley, Dolly? I thought I heard something out there now. Where, Matt? Where'd you hear it from? It just came from out here, so I don't know. I can't even tell where these noises are coming from. Oh. Oh. There is like a strong smell in here. Whatever is in this house is just under our nose. Wait. I hear water running. The faucet's on. The faucet's on. Jeez. OK, that's messed. Yeah, I definitely think we got enough evidence here this evening, that's for sure. Our third expert, Nadine, our intuitive healer, I think you're going to be very interested in what she has to say. A quaint bungalow in a small northern town and a grieving family, with the mystery of their daughter's death still haunting them. They are anxious to uncover the truth behind the odd occurrences in their home. Three inspectors that form a unique team are brought in to investigate. What have they discovered? What did they experience? 
And what will our homeowners do? We're here to present you with all the results, and we're going to start with Brian, our certified home inspector. The TV's turning it on and off. It could be the remote. The voices that they hear in the master bedroom, this is not a tight house. What the homeowners are hearing is outside influence noises. The painting flying off the wall. We've got so much vibration from these train tracks, it's no wonder that it fell off the wall. That fireplace turning itself on and off. When we inspected it, we saw loose connections. The taps in the bathroom are easily explained. When we turn from hot to cold, they're defective. The stuffed animal appearing suddenly on the floor in the bedroom. The dog or the cat picked up the stuffed toy, dropped it here in the doorway. Problem solved. I'm satisfied that we've been able to resolve every issue in this house. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? I think he's partly right, but some of the things he's saying I, I disagree with. I started with historical research on the home. And in my research, I came across a girl by the name of Dolly. And she passed away only six months before Ashley passed away. Her body was found in the woods just right by your home here. Yeah, we heard about that. Finding that information was definitely something that we couldn't ignore. So coming into the investigation, uh, we had to keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to show you a bit uh, from, from yeah. what I found. Sure. Okay. Oh, what the heck? The TV just came on. Oh, back here. Dolly, Ashley, can you do it again? The faucet's on. The faucet's on. Jeez. Oh. Oh. There is like a strong smell in here. Whatever is in this house is just under our nose. Definitely lots of activity going on in this house. So what do you think? Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Our third expert, Nadine, our intuitive healer, she did a complete reading of the spiritual energy in the home. I think you're going to be very interested in what she has to say. I'm being directed to look at this picture. Did she pass away? The primary spirit here is a young girl who had passed away. It's the daughter, Ashley. The incident that I saw, the strangulation and the murder of another person, that girl is here. The link between Ashley and the other person. Ashley's primary concern is to help others. I believe it's more of a general message to help others. Ashley's intent that night was to set herself free. She had some assistance leaving this place. Yes, most definitely. Her mom has absolute right to have suspicion and keep going forward. However, Ashley's energy would have attracted another physical source to aid in the assistance for her to go. For Ashley's mom is more important to build acceptance and, and heal her life and move forward. publicly as to who did this to her and what happened. I always thought that, you know, the truth will eventually come out and I will pursue it because I can't stop. That's just the thing, I can't stop. Something's driving me to do what I'm doing and I, I can't stop. I, I know that. The big picture here is that Ashley and Dolly, they want to inspire others. She was that type of person. She always wanted to help people. So she's carrying it on, I guess. Several weeks after our paranormal home inspection, Yvette has been inspired to continue her pursuit of the truth surrounding her daughter's death. The truth will come out because we know that there's more to her death than what's been put on the table. And I'm definitely going to pursue my fight for justice. And also, it's very comforting to know Ashley is in the house. And if she has a, a friend on the other side that she wants to bring home sometimes, hey, we don't mind.
there is a guy. He's powerful, extremely controlling, tons of fear. She didn't know what hit her. This is definitely causing movement. Look at the windows bouncing. Whoa, Ashley, can you do it again? I don't want to stay. Oh, get me out of here. I got to go. Claude and Yvette moved into their home two years ago, along with their son, Brandon, and daughter, Ashley. When we moved in, it was a mess, so we did a lot of repairs and cosmetic to bring it to our standard of living. Just six months after moving into the home, tragedy struck. Ashley was found dead in a nearby motel room. Growing up, Ashley was a vibrant and energetic girl. But several years ago, she had to undergo life-saving surgery. After her return home from the hospital, Ashley found herself struggling with an addiction to the pain medication prescribed to her. She used to be very outgoing and bubbly and just changed her whole personality and everything. And she knew, Ashley knew she had a problem. She just said, please bring me to rehab. So we did it immediately. After successfully completing a drug rehabilitation program, Ashley returned home. One month later, in the early hours of the morning, someone picked Ashley up from her home, and she was never seen alive again. They were still in the driveway when I pulled up. I knew something was wrong. As far as the police were concerned, and uh, they've been adamant all along, is that uh, it was an accidental death. And us as a family, as no one Ashley, we don't believe it. There's too many questions that haven't been answered. And as far as we're concerned, the case isn't closed. In the time since the tragedy, Claude and Yvette have experienced strange occurrences in their house. But has their grief turned common incidences into something more? Or is there indeed paranormal activity happening in the home? Combining traditional and non-traditional investigative techniques, our team is made up of intuitive healer Nadine, certified home inspector Brian, and paranormal investigator and researcher Michelle. The team will try and uncover what is behind the unsettling experiences of this small town home. To begin the investigation, Michelle meets with Claude and Yvette to hear firsthand what the family has been experiencing. What kind of activity was going on in the home? When I came in from work, Yvette always leaves the TV on in the dining room because we had a big dog. And when I came into the door, I uh, dropped my lunch pail and I went to the washroom. When I came back out, the TV in the living room was on. And the TV in the dining room was shut off. And there was nobody there. What else has been happening in the home? Fireplace going on and off on its own. Water running, taps going on on their own. We've heard sounds, we've heard, uh, you know. Like voices, yeah, anything we've like heard that. Voices, uh, yeah. Can you describe that for me? One morning, we woke up and, uh, both of us heard two voices. It seemed like women's voices, but it, it was so quick. I thought she had said something to me, and then she thought I was talking to her, but it was nobody yeah. else in the house. What about ever seeing anything move in the house? Mm -hmm. One night, I was laying in bed, and uh, all of a sudden, a picture of my head went flying across the room, knocked the lamp over on her side of the bed, which was across from where I slept. It flew quite a ways. There was no way that it could flew that far by itself. This was quite interesting. It wasn't long ago, actually. I had a bad rheumatoid flare-up. So I went to bed. At around 2, I woke up, and I noticed something right in the doorway on the floor. So I took my cane, and I just kind of knocked it, because I wasn't sure. I flicked the light on, and here it was, a stuffed animal that I used to interact with the kids with a lot. The thing is, that stuffed animal was on the bar downstairs in the rec room. What are you hoping that we can provide for you by doing our paranormal home inspection? And myself, I, I'm uh, always been a skeptic to, to this stuff, but there's things I can't explain. So that's a big reason why we've called, we've asked for you guys to help us out, because we want answers. We're gonna do our best to find you guys some answers. With the client's claims of bizarre activity in their home, Michelle and her assistant, Matt, head to the town archives to conduct their research on the property and surrounding area. While they focus on the history of the property, Certified Home Inspector Brian Daly begins his inspection. 
One day, according to my notes, the homeowner came home, the TV was on, he passed by it, there's another TV in the room just adjacent, and they kind of did a flip-flop or something. So this TV is working flip-flop with the other TV just across in the other room. The remote that's being used for these TVs is a universal remote. It operates on the same frequency, and that could have easily turned one off and one on at the same time. He just didn't realize it. We're gonna have a look at the fireplace in the living room here. Apparently, it's been coming on and off by itself. So the problem seems to have occurred down here with the electronics. And then look at this. We can see right here, the wires are loose. We've got a loose screw on the connection. This is an easy fix. It's just a turn of the screw just to tighten up that connection and the fireplace should operate properly. So we're in the master bedroom. The homeowners suggest that when they're in this room, they hear voices. Outside, we notice that the building envelope is not tight. Another thing is the neighbors. They're only 